What's up everyone, my name is Richard and I'd like to welcome you to my new YouTube channel. In this video, I want to teach you guys some basic logic. First off, what is logic exactly? The 18th century English philosopher Isaac Watts defined logic in the following way. He said, logic is the art of using reason well in our inquiries after truth and the communication of that truth to others. So why should we study logic? We should study it because it'll help us reason more effectively. What sets, what sets humans apart from the animals is the fact that we have reason. Therefore, we should train our rational faculties so that we don't get tricked by the faulty or deceptive reasoning of others. So let's proceed. What is the first word we need to learn in logic? The first word is proposition. What is a proposition? I wrote it down for you, I'll show you. A proposition is any sentence that signifies either truth or falsehood. A proposition is any sentence that signifies either truth or falsehood. There is a more technical definition used by philosophers, and that definition is a proposition is the content or meaning of a declarative sentence capable of truth or falsity, but we won't be using that one. We'll stick with this easier one, which was given by the 16th century English logician Thomas Wilson. So his definition is still pretty good. We'll be using this one. So let me give you some examples of propositions. The sentence, I like pizza, is a proposition. That sentence can be true or false. Uh, the sentence, Isaac Newton was a scientist, is a proposition because that sentence can be true or false. It's important to note that commands cannot be propositions because they can't be true or false. Um, the statement, do your homework, cannot be a proposition because it can't be true or false. Commands can be obeyed or disobeyed, but they cannot be said to be true or false. Likewise, questions are not propositions. If I ask you, how are you, that sentence itself can't be true or false. Um, your answer could be a proposition. You could say, I'm doing well. And that could be true or false, but um, the question itself cannot. So good. First thing is proposition. A proposition is any sentence that signifies either truth or falsehood. The next two words we need to learn are the words premise and conclusion. So what's a premise? A premise is a proposition that logically proves or supports a conclusion. A premise is a proposition that logically proves or supports a conclusion. What is a conclusion? A conclusion is a proposition that logically follows from the premise. A conclusion is a proposition that logically follows from the premise. So an argument consists of a premise and a conclusion. So let me give you an example. Um, Bob eats three greasy Big Macs per day. Therefore, Bob is supremely overweight. So in that argument, the sentence, Bob eats three greasy Big Macs per day, is the premise. The sentence, therefore, Bob is supremely overweight, is the conclusion. So um, one follows from the other. But technically, the more, complete form in a, the more complete form of an argument is what Aristotle calls a syllogism. What is a syllogism? A syllogism is this. A syllogism consists of three propositions, major premise, minor premise, and conclusion. So in this example, all men are mortal. This is a universal proposition. The minor premise is Socrates is a man. This is a particular proposition. And the conclusion is what follows from the premises. Socrates is mortal. So all men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, Socrates is mortal. What's beautiful about a syllogism is that if the first premise, if the major and, if the major and minor premises are true, then the conclusion will always follow, provided that the form of the argument is valid. Um, See, so yeah, that's what's beautiful about logic. If certain propositions are true, there are other ones that are logic connected that must also be true. And this could be put in mathematical form. All A is B, all C is A, all C is B. A, B, C can indicate anything, men, mortals, animals, whatever. So in our previous example, all men are mortal. Socrates is a man, therefore Socrates is mortal. When you're debating someone, you have two options um, if you wish to refute their argument. Um, the first option is to prove that one of the premises are false. If you could show that one of these are contrary to reality, then your opponent's argument falls. The second option is to show that the conclusion does not logically follow from the premises. There are arguments in which the premises are true, but the conclusion does not logically follow. And when that happens, you could use a fancy Latin phrase non sequitur, non sequitur. And this means it does not follow. So if you want to sound smarter than you actually are, use the phrase non sequitur. Latin is good for 
being pretentious. Very nice. So a review of how to refute someone's argument. You could either prove that one of the premises are false, or you could prove that the conclusion does not logically follow from the premises. And if you've done that, you've won the argument. Well, you've destroyed your opponent's argument and you have to present your own now. Nice. I'll leave it at that. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, press that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Uh, my next video should be out next week. So I'll see you then. Peace.